HW, and uh, thank you so much for watching Tone Juggy TV. We're in the Helix Editor. Look at it right there. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Uh, love it. Um, guys, today I want to talk about, uh, I get this question a lot, HW, how do you get that fat, crazy, strat tone? How do you do it, man? And I'm just like, hey, there's no secrets on Tone Juggy TV. Let me tell you right here. Um, today I actually want to talk about how to get just about any tone uh, 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 that you can imagine and, and how to do it with EQ. And so today I want to talk about the three most important EQs that you can have on your Helix. And they're not even so much specific EQs as they are locations of EQ and sort of strategies for EQing. Because if you understand these three locations and how they work to affect your sound, bro, you can get any sound you want. And not just bros, sisters too. We're inclusive here, okay? Um, I, I, uh, we appreciate the lady guitar players. So um, let's get let's get right to it. Today I'm using my 65 AC100 tone match thing. It's got a Voodoo IR here that gets some people mad. I don't know why, but uh, anyway, it's the SX A uh, uh, A30 model, and I've got some stuff going on that makes it sound like my 65 AC100. Cool. First, we're going to talk about this. On all the tone junkie stuff, free or paid or whatever, I always put an EQ block here. And sometimes I don't even use it. But I always put it there for this reason. Listen to what happens when I turn this off. Because off is usually the default. I turned it on and I even edited it. And we're going to talk about what this is doing. But listen to this off. <laughs> That is a strat on the bridge. It's on the bridge. So it's bright. What if we don't want it so bright? What if we, what can we do with EQ in this first location, which is before the amplifier? Look at that. It's right there before the amplifier. I've got it also before this dirt pedal. So anywhere I'm getting gain, I want to put an EQ before that. And what does that do? Well, let's listen to it. Here's what it does. I'm actually going to cut a bunch of high frequencies. Uh, I'm going to try to leave some presence in, but um, the, the exact position doesn't matter, but just check out the shape. I want to cut a bunch of high frequencies. I want to cram in a bunch of mid-range. I don't want to add a ton of low end. And here is what that's going to make the bridge of this Strat, Strat, sound like. <laughs> It's bigger. It's fatter. You don't believe me? Check it out. It's bigger. It's fatter. Let's turn it off and let's try some of these like pretend we got a little telly here. Let's try it with it now. This, it actually makes my Strat sound a little more like a Telecaster. Um, and I really dig that. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm actually using EQ here to edit the pickups. That's the first thing you can do, the first location. When we put EQ before gain, we're actually editing the sound of the guitar. 
Because before game, the amplifier, the pedal, it doesn't know what you're playing. It doesn't know if it's a humbucker pick up a single coil. All it knows is the signal it gets. Now that signal might sound like a single coil, sound like a humbucker, but those are judgments that we make. Is it mid-rangey? Is it big? Is it fat? Is it thin? Is it ice picky? Is it, uh, what is it? And so that is where um, uh, we can actually edit the pickups on our guitar. So this EQ is really serving to turn this into far more something like a thicker humbucker. And I'm actually cutting a lot of this 2K and 4K frequency. That will help your single coils not snap as much. And boosting in this area between 250 and 1K, specifically around this 500K, I think is a nice humbuckery region. We also don't want to push the bass too much. Humbuckers uh, often have a little more of a compressed bass, which makes their bass sound a little more chill and relax. And you, you can hear what this thing sounds like. I've made it even fatter now. <laughs> Dudes, that right there is impressive because it turns this Strat super, super fat. Super fat, right? That's with it off. Turn it back on. You just got yourself a new set of pickups, right? It's right there in the Helix. Okay, let's turn this off and let's go over here. I'm gonna edit this EQ. But HW, you can't touch a tone matched EQ. You can't touch the amp. The amp and the IR are in this strange, perfect voodoo harmony of magic. If you change it, it won't sound like the amp. My dudes, it's fine. It's 100% it's fine. Look, we got an EQ right here we can change. We got, uh, which I turn on for the rock stuff. Um, but you can change the EQ right here. Let's say we wanted to darken it up here. We want to achieve the same thing. We want a fatter, stratier thing here. Well, for the rock, the rock preset, uh, the, the, the rock snapshot, which is what I'm on right now, I'm already utilizing some cuts to the high end. So let's go back here to overdrive. Now that's completely off, right? So let's just use this. Let's say we want to fatten it up. Check it out. <laughs> Okay, cool. Now what do you want to do? Well, what happens if I lift the cut up? With an AC30 or an AC style circuit, you don't have a mid-range. You actually need to increase the bass to get more mids and you can actually bring down the treble and uh, this will help you get some more uh, oomph out of the sound here. So I'm gonna bring the treble down more. I'm gonna increase the bass. You can also increase the gain and stuff. Now on the bridge. AC nice and fat. In this case, it's AC100 using the SXA30 model. We made it nice and fat. Now let's come in here and let's do a similar thing. Let's turn that on and now listen. those same things in here. But HW, doesn't this now stop sounding like an AC100? I suppose uh, maybe you could think of it that way. You could also think of it as it still sounds like the AC100 if I began to change the amp or if I began to put an EQ uh, 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 in that amp, right? Uh, put a different EQ in that amp. In this case, I'm going between the cabinet. But that also could mimic um, a channel strip that I have at the microphone. Um, and it could be um, maybe even one that I'm running. You know, I've got the EQ here before. 
I could easily push it here after. But the, the point is, we're using EQ to, to alter the sound of the amplifier um, before the speaker cabinet. It's a useful location, and using a 10-band graphic EQ, is it accurate to the amp? Well, the amp doesn't have a 10-band ba uh, uh, graphic EQ. But what if it did? What if it did? I mean, how many times are we limited by analog technology, and so we move over to digital to solve the problems, and then when we get to digital, we go, well, that's not authentic. Well, that's a bunch of uh, horseradish, because... Wouldn't the amps all be better if we had 10 band graphic EQs instead of the Vox AC30, which has two EQs, two, two EQ uh, adjustments? It has bass and treble. It's got a cut too. That's a that's sort of a high end filter that's actually in the power amp section. But in the preamp, we get two. Wouldn't it be nice to have that mid range? Wouldn't it be nice to have a presence control? Wouldn't it be nice if they broke up the bass and they said, "Here's your deeps." And then like they like a deep switch, you see that on amps, and then and then you get the bass and then mid-range. And what if they said low and high mids? Sometimes amps do that. But what if they said you can actually now control your uh uh you know 250 to uh 450 or 500 frequencies as your low mids, your grumbly tweeds kind of mid-range, or you can go higher, 500 to 1200, and now here, or let me say 650 to 1250, and now that's your more martially mid-range. All mid-range, but it's all different, my friend, right? So what if they let us do that? It's hard to build that accuracy that uh, cheaply into a tube amp. And so what we get really with high and low controls and, and mid-range controls are actually high and low uh, pass filters that are actually taking the signal, passing it through, allowing some to pass through and, and other frequencies to not, and then we call that EQ. Um, that's why uh, amps like Plexis, amps like Fenders, have more gain when you turn everything on 12, because actually the EQ is only attenuating signal. Aha, the things you learn on Tone Junkie TV. Um, so I can make this thick right here, right? And what's that gonna do? I'm, ch I'm editing the amp. When I was back here, I turned that on. I was editing this to be a thicker guitar. That's a strat, that's a strat bridge. It's a Stratocaster bridge. That's thick as molasses, Jonesy, come on. You come over here, we got this thick now too. And that, that thickness together is the sludge, man. <laughs> Maybe a little much, so I take this off. Did you, what, did you hear that? Hang on, hang on, hang on. That was, oh, right, that was tone calling. It wants itself back. That was a terrible joke. Um, amps, uh, modify them. Don't be afraid to change them. Last EQ thing, here's what I do, um, and you can do whatever you want here. Let me, let me just show you this one thing before I go in here. Now let's talk about post-amp EQ. This is what um, you're gonna get mostly in your DAW when you record guitar and then you and then you put an EQ on it. This is what producers do to guitars, right? So um, I've got a couple strategies for this. So first, let's take this and let's listen to it. Let's turn it on and here's our thick sound. Very cool. Let's switch this. And now let's hear what this sounds like after the IR. Um, to me, we've got a lot, a lot, uh, there's, there's some subtleness going on there, but you can use a graphic EQ behind the amp. You 
can do that. The other place I do it, let me put this back how I had it. Um, and I'm gonna leave that off and um, I'll bring this cut down just a little bit so I can brighten it up a little bit so we can hear some of those high-end frequencies because I want to show you something. Okay, we all know that we can come in here. And by the way, people say, oh, it sounds bright, HW. Here you go. I got my high cut up here. So that's as harsh as you can ever be on this IR. And the AC100 is a bright, harshy amp, right? It's a loud beast of an amp. You want to bring that down? You can do that. Um, I'm going to leave it up for the purpose of this because I want you to hear this without another cut happening because I want to talk about these cuts. Now, um, you'll notice I have some of these in white because I'm actually cutting high end gain or high gain um, on higher frequencies with this high low shelf. I cut it as we go up the gain range because a lot of times um, amps, amps uh, change their EQ based on gain. So bass is usually going up, high end is usually not going up, bass is going up and it can make it sound like high end's going down. But a lot of times what we actually want is warmer overdrive tones. We want bright, classic, uh, chimey cleans and then kind of the a little rolled off top end on our overdrives and our rock stuff so the in general the more gain you have sort of the more rolled off top end I think often people want and so one thing I like to do is utilize this high low shift this is very important to understand what this does this is not the same as this IR block please don't get it confused this is much better it is much more sophisticated it is a much better way to to cut off high end. The high cut should really be used to eliminate high end you don't want. Vis-a-vis, -vis, I come in here and I say 10K, I don't want my signal above 10K. Are you gonna get frequencies above 10K? Yes, 10K is where you're gonna start a drop off. And we don't know what the cue is of this. It might be in the manual, but we have no um, actionable uh, 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 modifications to the cue. The cue is how deep that slope will be. We don't have anything like that. I'm gonna bring that up. What we do get right here is a high frequency. So what this is actually saying is at 8K, reduce my high, reduce 8K and up. So 8K, 9K, 10K, 11K, forever K. Reduce that by one and a half decibels. So this is actually a shelf. It's not a cut. We're not cutting to nothing. We're saying everything above a certain point, chill it out a little bit. Take a chill pill, high end. You got a little too much, little too much uh, zazz in your step. You know what I'm saying? So I'm actually gonna let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna put this at, at, at uh, 8k, and I'm actually gonna boost it. And now listen to this. <laughs> That's a strap bridge. Is it harsh? Yeah, I'm boosting 8k on a strap bridge. It should be harsh. Now let me let me cut. Uh, at 8k and bring that down and I'm telling hey 8k 8.5k 9k 10k that's a tax form G get out of here man take a chill pill bring it down all right lower your voice inside voice <laughs> That instantly takes away ear fatigue to me. Bring this all the way down. Go, hey, I want seven decibels. I want to chill that high end out, right? And so check this out. I'm going to play without it. Here's it on the neck without that, that, that chilled out high end. Turn that back on. back off. Turn it back on and let's play around with this. Let's bring this way down. My high gain, I want to reduce it and I want to bring this all the way down here. You hear that? That's ridiculous. No one would want to do that. But what you can do is ride this up until you get the frequency you like. That's the neck. Let me go to the bridge. Bro, you're getting crazy thick 
lovely to me sounding. It's sounding lovely where I am. Bridge tones from a single coil on a strat. And, and are, is this piercing? <laughs> just on one patch, because I can come over here to my clean, and what did that thing just do? It just changed. Now, I don't have this set to change, but. Come on, man, that's a good tone. You hear that? That's it, dudes. This is the, this is the, if you understand these three things, you use EQ before the amp to edit the sound of your pickups. It, it changes the sound of the guitar because the amp doesn't know if there's a mid-range boost in there or not. It just knows is there more mids or less mids? Is your, is your guitar fat? Is it thin? Is it, is it lovely? Is it harsh? It doesn't know. You can use EQ to completely change your pickups. You don't need to buy new pickups all the time. Uh, it, you, I mean, do it if there's a problem, but if you're just like, oh, I just wish my strap bridge was a little thicker, just put on an EQ right here, make it foot switchable on the Helix. You know, and then you can get your thin and thick tones all at the same time. You want to beef your telly up for a certain part in a song? You want to beef your strat up for a certain part in a song? This is how you do it. This is a, a wonderful control. You can add a little high-end presence. You can take a PAF. You can pull out a little mid-range, uh, add a little high-end sparkle. You might get something closer to like a crema or something, you know, Lambert tones kind of thing. You do, you do your thing. I have used this um, all the time with the Kemper um, to make my... Um, my my P90 guitars often sound like a thinner single coil for when I want a stratty tone. Just pull down some of that mid range, and you got a giant single coil, less mid range, starts to sound a little more stratty. In the amplifier section, we're editing the amplifier. Don't be limited by what the analog controls of the 1950s and 60s were. Um, a lot of the design decisions of amplifiers were made with cost in mind and ease of production. Leo, all of Leo Fender's designs were meant to be put together by uh, middle-aged women in Southern California. There was a huge labor market of middle-aged women who worked in sewing factories and electronics factories, and all his designs, the Stratocaster, you know, the, the, the bolt-on neck, the, the soldering here, this is all meant to be modular. The, the way you mount everything to a pick guard and place it in, they, they were doing that so that they could teach older women, grandmothers, how to do how to put this guitar together not luthiers the same is true of of the amps a, a lot of the amp decisions um, that are made on amplifiers are for cost you know we could build in something bigger crazier but it would cost 10 times as much and so a lot of times that's why you have a bunch of shared parts between all the acs all the marshals all the fenders you know, big, little, we're just changing output transformers, we're changing this design, that design, but all the amps are largely, I mean, they're, they're, they're very similar in a lot of aspects. So don't be limited by th those limits. They don't exist anymore. And in digital, you've got to be able to change your sound. This is, the, this is where digital really shines, when we can take control of our sound in a way we never have before. To put this to be able to place an EQ here or, here or here or here or here or here and not have to worry about amp load and, and uh, uh, impedance, that is, just, that is just a miracle. You could never do this in the analog world in any practical way. And then last but not least, as you change gain, we can make these change um, and we can really tailor high and low shelves, which I think is a real trick to great tone, to memorable, lasting, pleasing tone, very produced sounds. Um, so I would try that. I always use a high and low shelf. I always want it there, no matter what. 
I want it there in case I need it. And so I always build it in. That's me. You don't have to use it. You don't, and you're not going to need it all the time. Sometimes you're going to plug in a telly, hit an AC30, hit a, hit a G chord, E chord, and it just sounds like the heavens open. The harmonic voice of God is screaming down going, great tone, bro. And I'm like, amen. You know what I'm saying? All right. HW, out. I hope you, this has been enjoyable. I hope you get something out of this. Um, I have all these EQs in the free stuff. Uh, this is a paid patch, but there's free stuff. Uh, 65 Twin, and in a couple days, there'll be a new uh, Voltage Queen. It's an old Gibson. It's coming out. All, these same EQ placements are all in there. Grab it, experiment.